Hello, hello, my friends. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. This weekend, I'm sure, was busy, busy, busy for many, many of you as we celebrate Mother's Day this weekend. So I just want to first say congratulations and happy Mother's Day to any of you that are moms, any of you that are grandmothers, any of you that are expecting, and any one of you that have also lost a baby, right? We want to acknowledge you too because you too are a mother. So we want to just bless you this weekend. Um, as I was praying to the Lord today and as I was contemplating on what to bring um, this weekend in this video, the Lord placed in my heart to continue reading his word. As you know, we have been covering small books in the Bible. My last two videos, we did the book of Philemon. We also did the book of Jude. Um, but today I want to read to you a book in the Bible. Very familiar. One of, um, it's only four chapters and it is the book of Ruth. This book is short but powerful. We see the lineage of Jesus in this book. We also see in this book, it's a book of grief, of hardship, but also how the Lord can redeem us, right? Through our storms and through our trials and how he still watches over us and how he can change our sorrow into joy. Um, and I believe it's just appropriate for Mother's Day, right? It's a, it's a great book. So if you haven't read it, um, I hope you enjoy this. And if you have, I pray that you find rest and peace as we read this, this book. And maybe you learn something new or maybe you hear something, right? And the Lord reveals it to you. But before we get started, I just want you to go ahead and get comfortable. Comfortable, comfortable, comfortable. May you remove any distractions that may get in the way. May you be edified. May you be encouraged and strengthened through the reading of the word. As I've said before, the word of God is alive and it is active and it is constantly, constantly speaking to us. And I know that the Lord has a word for you tonight. So get comfortable and get ready to relax. presence of the Lord is here. He is with you. He is with, with you. So the book of Ruth. Are you ready? Are you ready? And it says, in the days when the judges ruled in Israel, a severe famine came upon the land. So a man from Bethlehem in Judah left his home and went to live in the country of Moab, taking his wife and two sons with him. The man's name was Elimelech, and his wife was Naomi, Naomi, Naomi. Their two sons were Malon and Kilion. They were Ephratites from Bethlehem in the land of Judah. And when they reached Moab, they settled there. Then Elimelech died and Naomi was left with her two sons. The two sons married Moabite women. One woman married, was named Orpha and the other a woman named Ruth. But about 10 years later, both Malon and Kilion died. 
they left Naomi alone without her two sons or her husband. Then Naomi heard in Moab that the Lord had blessed his people in Judah by giving them good crops again. So Noemi and her daughter-in-laws got ready to leave for Moab to return to her homeland. With her two daughter-in-laws, she set out from the place where she had been living and they took the road that would lead them back to Judah. But on the way, Naomi said to her daughter-in-laws, go back to your mothers and may the Lord reward you for your kindness to your husbands and to me. May the Lord bless you with the security of another marriage. Then she kissed them goodbye and they broke down and wept. No, they said, we want to go with you to your people. But Naomi replied, why should you go on with me? Can I still birth to other sons who could grow up to be your husbands? No, my daughters, return to your parents' homes, for I am too old to marry again. And even if it were possible, and I were to get married tonight and bear sons, then what? Would you wait for them to grow up and refuse to marry someone else? No, of course not, my daughters. Things are far more bitter for me than for you because the Lord himself has raised his fist against me. And again, they wept together and Orpha kissed her mother-in-law goodbye. But Ruth clung tightly to Naomi. Look, Naomi said to her, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. You should do the same. But Ruth replied, don't ask me to leave you and turn back. Wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you live, I will live. Your people, your people will be my people and your God will be my God. Wherever you die, I will die and there I will be buried. May the Lord punish me severely if I allow anything but death to separate us. When Naomi saw that Ruth was determined to go with her, she said nothing more. So the two of them continued on their journey when they came to Bethlehem. The entire town was excited by their arrival. Is it really Noemi? The woman asked. Don't call me Naomi. Don't call me Naomi, she responded. Listen to this, this is powerful. Don't call me Naomi, she responded. Instead, call me Mara. For the Lord Almighty had made life very bitter for me. I went away full, but the Lord has brought me home empty. Why call me Naomi when the Lord has caused me to suffer and the Almighty has sent such tragedy upon me? So Naomi reached from Moab returned from Moab, accompanied by her daughter-in-law Ruth, the young Moabite woman. They arrived in Bethlehem in late spring at the beginning of the barley harvest. We are in chapter two now. Now, there was a wealthy and influential man in Bethlehem named Boaz, who was a relative of Naomi's husband, Elimelech. One day, Ruth, the Moabite, said to Naomi, Let me go out into the harvest fields to pick up the stalks of grain left behind by anyone who is kind enough to let me do it. Naomi replied, All right, my daughter, go ahead. 
So Ruth went out to gather grain behind the harvesters, and as it happened, she found herself working in a field that belonged to Boaz, the relative of her father-in-law, Elimelech. While she was there, Boaz arrived from Bethlehem and greeted the harvesters. The Lord be with you, he said. The Lord bless you, the harvesters replied. Then Boaz asked his foreman, who is that young woman over there? Who does she belong to? And the foreman replied, she is the young woman from Moab who came with Naomi. She asked me this morning if she could gather grain from behind the harvesters. She has been hard at work ever since, except for a few minutes rest in the shelter. Boaz went over and said to Ruth, listen, my daughter, stay right here with us when you gather grain. Don't go to any other fields. Stay right behind the young women working in my field. See which part of the field they are harvesting and then follow them. I have warned the young men not to treat you roughly. And when you are thirsty, help yourself to the water they have drawn from the well. Roof fell at his feet and thanked him warmly. What have I done to deserve such kindness? She asked, I am a foreigner. Yes, I know, Boaz replied, but I also know about everything you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband. I have heard how you left your father and mother and your own land to live here amongst complete strangers. May the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to take refuge, reward you fully for what you have done. I hope I continue to please you, sir, she replied. You have comforted me by speaking so kindly to me, even though I am not one of your workers. At meantime, Boaz called to her, come over here and help yourself to some food. You can dip your bread in the sour wine. So she sat with the harvesters and Boaz gave her some roasted grain to eat. She ate all she wanted and still had some left over. When Ruth went back to work again, Boaz ordered his young men let her gather grain right among the sheaves without stopping her and pull out some heads or heads of barley from the bundles and drop them on purpose for her. Let her pick them up and don't give her a hard time. So Ruth gathered barley there all day. And when she beat out the grain that evening, it filled an entire basket. She carried it back in town and showed it to her mother-in-law. Ruth also gave her roasted grain that was left over from her meal. Where did you gather all this grain today, Naomi asked. Where did you work? May the Lord bless the one who helped you. So Ruth told her mother-in-law about the man in whose field she worked. She said, the man I worked with today is named Boaz. May the Lord bless him. Naomi told her daughter-in-law, he is showing his kindness to us as well as to your dead husband. The man is one of our closest relatives, one of our family redeemers. Then Ruth said, what's more? Boaz even told me to come back and stay with the harvesters until the entire harvest is completed. Good, Naomi ex exclaimed. Do as he says, my daughter. Stay with his young women right through the whole harvest. You might be harassed in the other fields, but you'll be safe with him. So Ruth worked alongside the women in Boaz fields and gathered grain with them until the end of the barley harvest. Then she continued working with them through the wheat harvest in early summer. And all the while she lived with her mother-in-law. We are on chapter three. 
One day, Naomi said to Ruth, my daughter, it's time that I found you a permanent home for you so that you will be provided for. Boaz is a close relative of ours and he's been very kind by letting you gather grain with his young women. Tonight, he will be winnow winnowing barley at the threshing floor. Now do as I tell you, take a bath and put on perfume and dress in your nicest clothes. Then go to the threshing floor, but don't let Boaz see you until he has finished eating and drinking. Be sure to notice where he lies down, then go in and uncover his feet and lie down there. He will tell you what to do. I will do everything you say, Ruth replied. So she went down to the threshing floor that night and followed the instructions of her mother-in-law. After Boaz had finished eating and drinking and was in good spirits, he, he laid down at the far end of the pile of grain and went to sleep. Then Ruth came quietly, uncovered his feet, and laid down. Around midnight, Boaz suddenly woke up and turned over. He was surprised to find a woman lying at his feet. Who are you? He asked. I am your servant, Ruth, she replied. Spread the corner of your covering over me, for you are my family redeemer. The Lord bless you, my daughter, Boaz exclaimed. You are showing even more family loyalty now than you did before. For you have not gone after a younger man, whether rich or poor. Now don't worry about a thing, my daughter. I will do what is necessary. For everyone in town knows you are a virtuous woman. But while it's true that I am one of your family redeemers, there is another man who is more closely related to you than I am. Stay here tonight and in the morning I will talk to him. If he is willing to redeem you, very well, let him marry you. But if not willing, then as surely as the Lord lives, I will redeem you myself. Now lie down here until morning. So Ruth lay at Boaz's feet until the morning, but she got up before it was light enough for people to recognize each other. For Boaz had said, no one must know that a woman was here at the threshing floor. Then Boaz said to her, bring your cloak and spread it out. He measured six scoops of barley into the cloak and placed it on her back. Then he returned to town. When Ruth went back to her mother-in-law, Noemi asked, What happened, my daughter? Ruth told Noemi everything Boaz had done for her, and she added, He gave me these six scoops of barley and said, Don't go back to your mother-in-law empty-handed. Then Noemi said to her, Just be patient, my daughter. Until we hear what happens, the man won't rest until he has settled things today. And we are on the last chapter, guys, chapter four. Boaz went to the town gate and took a seat there. Just then the family redeemer he had mentioned came by. So Boaz called out to him, come over here and sit down. I want to talk to you. So they sat down together. Then Boaz called 10 leaders from the town and asked them to sit as witnesses. And Boaz said to the family redeemer, You know Noemi, who came back from Moab? She is selling the land that belonged to our relative Elimelech. I thought I should speak to you about it so that you can redeem it as you wish. If you want the land, then buy it here in the presence of these witnesses. But if you don't want it, let me know right away because I am next in line to redeem it after you. The man replied, all right, I'll redeem it. Then Boaz told him, of course, your purchase of the land from Noemi also requires that you marry Ruth, the Moabite widow. That way she can have children who will carry on her husband's name and keep the land in the family. Then I can't redeem it, the family redeemer replied, because this might endanger my own estate. You redeem the land. 
I cannot do it. Now in those days, it was custom in Israel for anyone transferring a right of purchase to remove his sandal and hand it to the other party. This publicly validated the transaction. So the other family redeemer drew off his sandal and he said to Boaz, you buy the land. Then Boaz said to the elders and to the crowd standing around, you are witnesses that today I have bought from Noemi all the property of Elimelech, Kilion, and Milon, and with the land I have acquired Ruth, the Moabite widow of Milon, to be my wife. This way she can have a son to carry on the family name of her dead husband and to inherit the family property here in his hometown. You are all witnesses today. Then the elders and all the people standing in the gate replied, We are witnesses. May the Lord make this woman who is coming into your home like Rachel and Leah, from whom all the nation of Israel descended. May you prosper in Ephrathah and be famous in Bethlehem. And may the Lord give you descendants by this young woman who will be like those of ancestor Perez, the son of Tamar, and Judah. So Boaz took Ruth into his home and she became his wife. When he slept with her, the Lord enabled her to become pregnant and she gave birth to a son. Then the women of the town said to Noemi, praise the Lord who has now provided a redeemer for your family. May this child be famous in Israel. May he restore your youth and care for you in your old age. For he is the son of your daughter-in-law who loves you and has been better to you than seven sons. Noemi took the baby and cuddled him to her breast. And she cared for him as if he were her own. The neighbor women said, now at last Noemi has a son again. And they named him Obed. He became the father of Jesse and the grandfather of David. This is the genealogical record of their ancestor Perez. Perez was the father of Hezron. Hezron was the father of Ram. Ram was the father of Aminabed. Animabed was the father of Nasan. Nashon was the father of Salmon. Salmon was the father of Boaz. Boaz was the father of Obed. Obed was the father of Jesse. And Jesse was the father of David. That is the book of Ruth. And I just want to share some things um, as I was reading and took some notes. Um, you know that I like to give you like my small thoughts and anything that I have found as I studied the word. And the first thing is that the time period of this was between 1160 and 1100 BC. And this was during the latter period of the Judges. Remember we have the book of Judges. So this was during that latter period. And in the beginning of the book of Ruth, we see it says, In the days when the judges ruled in Israel, a severe famine came upon the land. So a man from Bethlehem in Judah left his home and went to live in the country of Moab. So they were struggling to survive a famine. So they moved from Bethlehem to Moab. And after they moved and their sons married, which was Kilion and Malam, they married Orpha and um, Ruth, Elimelech died. And then 10 years later, Noemi's sons die. And we see that Noemi is in such grief. She is in so much pain that she's like telling her the only people left in her life to leave to go back with their family and grief has a way of doing that to us right i have seen people go through grief and push people away people that want to be there for them but the grief is so heavy the grief is so strong that they rather isolate and be by themselves than to be with people, right? And we see that Noemi's pain is just so great. 
during this time of losing not only her husband but her two only sons that she's telling both Orpha and Ruth to go back and leave because she is moving back to her hometown and there is no reason for Orpha or for Ruth to come with her because this is their town this is their country this is where they were raised this is their culture this is their gods this is this is what they do here why would you come with me right and Orpha cries and you see that she cries with Ruth and she's like okay and she leaves but Ruth Ruth shows remarkable loyalty to Noemi and she's like don't ask me to leave you and turn back wherever you go I will go wherever you live I will live for your people will be my people and your God will be my God and then when they get back to their hometown Noemi says something that is so drastic. Like, it's a drastic change of who she is. It says, So the two of them continued on their journey when they came to Bethlehem, and the entire town was excited by their arrival. Is it really Noemi? They were so excited to see Naomi, right? And I'm sorry if you hear me say Naomi and Noemi. It's my Spanish. But the whole town is excited to see her. She must have been one of those popular people, you know, like from the town. Like she left and now we're excited to see you back. Like God is good, right? But this is where God grabs my attention. Verse 20, chapter 1. Don't call me Noemi, she responded. Instead, call me Mara. For the Lord Almighty has made life very bitter for me. The, the name Noemi means pleasant, but the word Mara, the name Mara in Hebrew means bitter. We see a drastic change in Noemi, and she has taken on the identity of bitter. She has allowed her grief to consume her to the extent where her name is changed from pleasant to bitter. I don't, I don't know if you are catching what is going on here, but she has allowed her grief, her pain to be her identity. And now she changes her name from pleasant, which is Noemi, to bitter, which is Mara. Do not call me that anymore. Call me Mara for the Lord Almighty has made my life very bitter. I went away full, but the Lord has brought me home empty. Why call me Noemi when the Lord has caused me to suffer and the Almighty has sent such tragedy upon me? This entire verse, verse 20 and 21, it is so powerful and so many of us can relate to this so many of us have gone through a trauma through an experience through a season in our lives that it could have changed our very being it could change our core it can change you as a person her grief was so strong it was an expression of her grief after losing her husbands and her sons. <laughs> but the way the Lord works, he works in ways unimaginable to our human mind and comprehension. As we continue her story, we see the Lord work not only in the life of Ruth, but in the life of Noemi. As we go on to chapter 2, we see that there is a family member, a relative to Noemi's late husband, Elimelech, and his name is Boaz. Boaz means swiftness, um, and he was a man of noble character, and he shows so much generosity. 
and Boaz learns about Ruth's backstory and shows her so much kindness. Boaz even prays that God will bless Ruth. We see this in verses 10. And when Noemi finds out about Boaz, she states that he is one of our family redeemers. Boaz is a kinsman, a redeemer. It is a cultural practice that a redeemer, a family redeemer, can marry the widow and protect the family line. So this was a cultural practice during that time. And this is why Noemi tells this to Ruth. This man is one of our closest relatives, one of our family redeemers. We see this in verse 20 in chapter 2. And as we continue to chapter 3, we see that Noemi tells Ruth to take a bath, put on perfume, and dress in your nicest clothes. That means get out of your widow's clothes. This will show people that you are now available. She went through a process of grief, but she's telling Ruth, her son, which was her son's wife, Get out of that clothes that you are wearing. Get out of your widow's clothes. Get out of the, the clothes of grieving, of a grieving widow. And put on your nicest clothes. Put on perfume to show that you are available. And she tells her to go to the threshing floor. And the threshing floor is a place of separation and revelation. A place of exposure that collects what is valuable it separates the grain and the straw and when she does this Boaz is surprised and amazed again by her loyalty he is so shocked by Ruth's loyalty because she doesn't have to do this she doesn't have to go with a family redeemer she can go for someone younger she can go for somebody that's rich. She can go for somebody that, that looks 10 times better, right? In our culture nowadays, we look at looks before we look at anything else. But Boaz is amazed again by her loyalty. And he says, I will do what is necessary for everyone in town to know that you are a virtuous woman. And we see that a virtuous woman is found in Proverbs 31. Now, it is important for us to understand that Boaz says there is another relative that is closer that is closely related to to you than I am right that is more closely related to Elimelech than I am but I'm gonna talk to him in the morning and I will try to redeem you myself technically this man the closest family redeemer has the right to marry her before Boaz and then we see in chapter 4 that Boaz goes to the town gate. He takes a seat there and he talks to his closest family redeemer. But he doesn't only just talk to him one-on-one. -on -one. He asks for witnesses to witness the transaction. And he, of course, the closest family member, when he finds out about the land, he's like, oh, I'll redeem it. Sure. But he didn't know that Ruth was attached to that. And when he finds out, that he now has to also marry a Moabite widow because they want to continue her legacy, like the, the lineage, to keep the husband's name. He's like, I can't do that. We see that in verse 6. And it's crazy because Boaz does not mind marrying Ruth because he knows her character. She's loyal. She's a virtuous woman. And we see that Boaz is now able to make this transaction to not only acquire the land, but he's also able to marry Ruth. He's able to redeem her. And just as Ruth was loyal to Noemi, now Boaz will be loyal to Ruth. It's funny because in the book of Ruth, God is hardly mentioned in this book at all. 
we we never read anything much right they don't mention god but we see him working closely behind the scenes god is in every detail of our lives ruth's tragic story ends up being led to the lineage of david ruth's tragic story your tragic story your loss your grief your pain god is in every detail god is in every detail i want you to receive that tonight if you don't take anything else from this god is in every detail of your life we see here as well that the Lord enabled Ruth to become pregnant and she gave birth to a son. And Noemi took the baby and cuddled him in her breast and she cared for him as if it were her own. And the neighbor women said, Noemi, at last, Noemi has a son again. God also changes her story. Noemi receives her joy back. We see a change in her character again through God's goodness and God's faithfulness. We see a change from bitter and we see her joyful again. We see her have life again. And that is what God, God does for us. And something that I found that was so interesting as well in this book that like rocked my marvels my mind is that we know that david this i hope this blows your mind too if you don't know about this david is from the lineage of ruth right but did you know that goliath the one that david fought and killed the Philistine giant comes from Orpha's lineage. Orpha, the one that went back to her people. The one, the one that went back to her gods. The one that stayed in her country. Goliath comes from her lineage. So we see two widows that made a decision. One to go back to her country, to go back to her gods, and one to follow Ruth and showed loyalty Goliath and David that that when I found this out it blew my mind and Ruth's sweetness Ruth's loyalty Ruth's love and care and not allowing Noemi to push her away right being there constantly also helped her change from being bitter she was a rock for her during her hardest times and i want to encourage someone that is going through a hard time right now in this season of your life do not push people away i don't know why god is is putting this in my spirit and in my heart right now we have a tendency of isolating ourselves and I speak for myself because I am one of those people that when I'm going through it I don't want to talk to Tom Dick or Harry can I just be honest can I be real there's like a Spanish saying that says no me huelen las azucena like I, 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 nothing I don't want to smell nothing I'm not happy like I, I, I don't want it like nothing I, I, I don't want to deal with it right and we have a tendency of pushing people away when seasons are hard when we're going through it when 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 we're down and out when we're feeling depressed when we're feeling sad when when we're grieving we have a tendency of pushing the people closest to us away i had a friend in my life who i loved dearly who my children called aunt, like Didi. And I remember that she went through a horrible loss. And I tried my best to be there, but I got pushed away. 
and it was one of the hardest things that I had to go through because I grieved the friendship that I loved and cherished. People have a tendency of changing through grief, through sadness and sorrow. And there are people that want to genuinely be there to help you, to help you rise up, to remind you of who you are, the purpose that you carry, that you are anointed, that you are a child of God. Do not allow your grief to push you away from the people that are called to be there for you, to help you. We want to be there for you. We want to help you navigate through that season of loss and, and despair and agony. We want to be that shoulder for you to cry on. You are not a burden. You are not a burden to us. Appreciate those people that are still there checking up on you. That want to be there through your difficult time. You are not a broken record to us. We rather you vent to us and cry to us than you go through a season of despair and agony and darkness by yourself, knowing that the enemy can creep into a foothold of your grief and take you out. I can't imagine what would have happened to Noemi if Ruth would have left her. I can't imagine what would have happened to Noemi. If Ruth wasn't persistent and Ruth wasn't loyal to her. When she already came back to her hometown and was saying, do not call me that, call me Mara. Ruth would have, Naomi would have lived the rest of her life bitter, alone. Because after a while, when someone's bitter for a long, long time, people don't even want to deal with those people anymore. And they're like, okay, you don't want to change, you don't want to, you don't want to move on, you don't want to do this, you don't want to do that, then fine, stay there in your corner, have your own pity party. People get tired, right? Especially those that don't have a heart to understand you. But I can't imagine what would happen to Noemi if Ruth wasn't loyal, if Ruth would have just left. What would have happened to Naomi? We need people. We need people and we need God and when God places people in your life be open don't push them away they want to be there to help especially if they're godly people I don't know why the Holy Spirit is leading me here but this is for someone someone that is going through a hard hard time accepting help receiving help and God just wants to remind you that he has placed specific people in your life to be there for you because he loves you, to comfort you, to encourage you, to edify you, to bop you across the head when you're being hard-headed, right? Because people that are real, people who love you, don't want to just continue to see you on the floor. There is a season for everything. We find that in Ecclesiastics. There is a season for everything. But in that season, do not allow grief, do not allow pain, do not allow despair to push you away from the people that are assigned to you that want to be there for you. I pray that this book bless your life. I pray you receive something out of it. Let us pray as we just dismiss and we go into a deep sleep hopefully in the name of jesus but i pray that the lord edified your spirit that he spoke to you clearly and i just want to thank you so much for continuing to support and watch this channel i pray i pray i pray that we continue to reach souls for the feet of jesus so father god we just thank you lord for the word that was read today we thank you lord for the bread of life, the one that continues to feed our soul, the one that continues to correct us, the one that continues to love on us and show us your grace and your mercy, the one that continues to real, reveal to us who you are in our lives. God, that you are in every detail of our lives. You 
are the Alpha and the Omega. You are the beginning and the end. You are sovereign, God. You are sovereign. And God, I present to you every person that is going through a hard, hard season right now, every person that is struggling, may you bless them, may you cover them, may you encourage them, may you give them strength, God, to navigate this season of their lives, my God. May you reveal yourself to them. Tonight, I pray for comfort and peace that surpasses all understanding as they navigate through this season. God, I pray that you will change our names from bitter back to pleasant, God. That you will bring back the joy of our lives. That we will be able to have joy and display joy to the world, God. That we won't push people away, God. But we will take the help when you bring it to us. May we rely on you, God. And may we see your goodness through it all. May we see that you are faithful through it all, my God. Because you are faithful. You are constant, God. You don't change. God, we thank you, God, because we know that there is light at the end of the tunnel. We know that there is light at the end of the tunnel, and God, we will get through this. This too shall pass. God, I pray that you continue to speak to your children. May you continue to use this platform, God, of social media to minister your word to souls all across the world. May we reach Australia. May we reach Egypt. May we reach um, Gaza, God. May we reach Israel. May we reach Mexico, God. May we reach Brazil, wherever it may be. May your word be spread. May your gospel be spread up to the ends of the earth, God. There is no limit of what you can do with this social media tool may i be used as a vessel to speak life into your children to remind them that they are loved to remind them that they are not alone god i pray that you continue to give me wisdom and understanding but overall may you bless your children may you comfort them may you bring peace god in the mighty name of jesus i pray amen and amen